It's been about five to six years since the last time we've really seen the Air Jordan 1 Low OG. We saw a lot of them in the early mid 2010s. They did a whole bunch of the famous colorways that we know and love. And back then, the Jordan 1 Low wasn't really an appreciated sneaker. It was actually kind of like frowned upon and they actually ended up at a lot of Nike outlets. And now you compare that to these days and Jordan 1 Lows are one of the most popular sneakers to date. You look everywhere and a lot of stores have them. A lot of people are buying them up. Now the major difference between the OG and the Jordan 1 Low they've been releasing recently is the tongue. They use a different tongue and then the branding. Branding is also slightly different, but the overall shape of the sneaker and everything else is pretty much the same. But because Jordan brand knows us sneaker heads love that OG branding, that Nike Air on the tongue, they've actually increased the price of the Jordan 1 Low by 40 US dollars or 50 Canadian. So that's taking a 90 US dollar sneaker and making it 130. Bruh. So we're gonna get into why that is and a whole bunch more in today's video. But these right here, the Air Jordan 1 Low Ghost Green are the first true general release Jordan 1 Low OG to release in about the last five to six years. So with that said, let's take a look at them. Before we get into today's video, I want to let you guys know we do cover a lot of other Jordan 1 Lows. So if you like Jordan 1 Lows, make sure you check out my other Jordan 1 Low reviews and my top 10 Jordan 1 Lows of 2020. How many times will I say Jordan 1 Low in today's video? I am going to lose track. So the Air Jordan 1 Low Ghost Green released around May 21st, 2021 this year. And uh, they actually released late depending on where you're from. In Canada, they had a later drop date. Some places in America dropped them early. I ended up buying these off of eBay for slightly above retail price, nothing too crazy. I think it paid about $10 over tax. So I'm happy I picked these up. If you guys are interested in these sneakers, I'll leave them linked down below to places where you can buy them. But they're pretty much sold out at retail for a lot of places. But uh, on the right side, they're not reselling for too much. So as I mentioned earlier, these sneakers have a price increase compared to the previous Air Jordan 1 Lows that we We've seen and last year we they, they, they released a lot of them right and they released a lot of them at that 90 US or $120 Canadian price point so if you like these you're gonna feel the pinch man like a $40 increase for the Jordan 1 low it's a near 50% increase that's a substantial amount so these now come in at 130 as I mentioned and 170 Canadian now on the bright side there are some nice reasons as to why it's a slight increase in the price the quality is definitely better along with other details that we never really seen on a Jordan 1 low before but before we get into the shoes themselves you know you know that box that black and gold Jordan box we're so used to seeing for a lot of releases and especially Jordan 1 lows these actually come with the OG branding like the OG branded Air Jordan 1 box the one that we're used to seeing when it comes to the high top silhouettes imagine if they started giving this box for Jordan 1 mids oh my gosh but it's exciting to see that they have that Nike branded box because when you collect a lot of sneakers maybe you love that box you can just stack them up and it's gonna look all beautiful and stuff now when it comes to the typical Air Jordan 1 low they don't ever include extra laces it's usually that one pair that's on the shoe and that's it however this pair uh, since it's an OG branded one and it has that more well increased price point they do come with some extra laces which is nice it helps ease the pain these do come with white shoelaces already equipped on the sneaker when you buy them but they also come with black shoelaces if you want to go for the black laces and they also have this like lime volt green one as well which would probably look really fun to wear in the summer but personally I really like the way that the white laces look on the shoe it gives it a really slim clean profile now my first impression of the sneaker now when it comes to Jordan 1's you guys know that smell that beautiful Jordan 1 high smell well believe it or not these Jordan 1's have that same Jordan 1 high smell. It must be the OG branding or the box or just something. I don't know what it is, man, but these do smell differently compared to the Jordan 1 lows from previous years. I know that's gonna make these shoes an instant buy for some of you weirdos, but it's true. These smell amazing. Now, besides that, my actual first impressions of the shoe, I gotta say the quality difference is very, very noticeable right away. Typically, Jordan 1 lows are known to not really have the best quality leather, but upon closer inspection of this Jordan 1 logo screen, you're gonna notice they actually put some effort into the leather. They put some effort into the materials, the stitching, the stitching is a little nicer than usual and uh, you definitely you definitely can understand why they have to increase the price 
at least a little bit. And I mean, if you were paying resale prices for Jordan 1 Lowe's over the last couple of years, maybe like the ones that released last year for some colorways, you were paying for that lower, like eh, quality leather or pleather, it wasn't real leather. This pair, you're getting actual genuine leather, which is really nice. Now, as far as the history and the story behind these shoes, there really isn't any history at all. This is a completely brand new colorway that Jordan Brand decided to release. These aren't inspired at all by any high top silhouette, by any mid top. This is just a random colorway that they threw together. And I gotta say, it's not something I would have expected them to do when it comes to reissuing the Air Jordan 1 Low OG. I would have thought they were going to release an OG colorway, maybe a bread, maybe Chicago, but no, they went for a ghost green. As I mentioned earlier, the leather quality on this is fantastic. It's definitely worth, I think, the price bump just because you're getting a sneaker that you genuinely like. You feel the quality when you hold the shoe. When it comes to the white leather, it uses this like slightly textured uh, pebbled-ish leather. However, on some pairs I've seen, it gets like really wrinkly leather on the side panel behind the swoosh. So the leather texture on your pairs might vary. So if you're looking to buy them, maybe try and get photos of you if you can, if you're really picky about the kind of leather that's on the shoe. I guess the quality consistency wasn't as on point for this as compared to other releases. But yeah, the leather quality they use on these definitely rival the high top Air Jordan 1 high. Next up, let's take a look at the uh, new book portions on the shoe, which is the ghost green color scheme. So this ghost green is kind of like a really, really faded lime green. So the ghost green, it isn't too, too loud. I don't think it's going to clash very, very hard with a lot of outfits that you could wear with this. This is a kind of a neutral summer sneaker. Back to the new buck. You have this new buck that surrounds the white leather toe box along with going up the eyelets of the shoe and on that Nike swoosh as well. You also have that new buck on the very back booty panels as well. And it's the same new buck we've seen on a couple of other recent Air Jordan when high releases like the University Blue, like the Shadow 2.0s. Another twist they did with this shoe is they added an extra swoosh. I, I don't know why, but they put an extra swoosh right here on the toe box. It's just like hanging out there. Kind of reminds me of that Just Do It pack that Nike did with the Air Force Ones and the Air Max 90s where they put a bunch of extra unnecessary swooshes. They just put it there. Another twist, like something we've never seen them do before with the Nike Air Tongue is they gave it this checkered board print. Like it is so bizarre looking at this with the checkered board print. It's not something I'm used to seeing at all when it comes to any Air Jordan 1 high. And it kind of reminds me of the Vans checkered boards that is a super popular sneaker to wear during the summer. So when I see that, when I look top down, I'm like, I get that Vans kind of vibe because the checkered board print on shoes has become so uh, synonymous with the Vans old school. And then you have surprisingly a uh, kind of a vintage orange aged looking foam uh, tongue. This tongue is not the same color as the rest of the shoe, like the leather. I would have expected like this tongue to be white, you know, to match the rest of the shoe, but they went for this aged orange and it looks, it looks cool. It's different, you know, it's different. And besides that, you also clearly have the exposed foam on the ankle area, on the collar, and at the very top of the tongue as well. Like this is really bizarre to see. So they're really, you know, they're experimenting. You can tell they're really experimenting on the Jordan 1 Low doing these cool things or these different things when it comes to the stitching, the tongue, and the exposed foam. Taking a look at the booty of the shoe with the Air Jordan Wings logo, you have it debossed into this leather, and this leather material is actually coated with a reflective silver uh, coating. It looks really cool. It definitely pops at night. I didn't even realize it was a reflective material till I accidentally like took a flash photo or I was taking like an Instagram story at nighttime and it lit up and it was like, whoa, that's cool. These have a white midsole, nothing too crazy. And then we also have the black outsole. The black outsole looks good and it complements the black checkered board print on the tongue. Now in terms of sizing and comfort for the Jordan 1 logo screen, I got to give these a eh, solid six and a half to seven out of 10, but they're still a solid sneaker for like daily use. If you're used to wearing maybe say some Vans old school, it's kind of like a similar level in comfort, honestly. Let's face it, you're not wearing these for comfort, you're wearing these for style. You want these to look fresh for your outfits. In terms of sizing, these fit just like any other Air Jordan 1, so I would recommend going your true size. I'm a typically a size 10, grab these in a size 10, 
And uh, honestly, I think I could have gone maybe half a size down on these. So if you uh, are able to try these out in person, maybe test out half a size down. But yeah, true to size is my typical recommendation for the Air Jordan 1. And of course, if you have a wider foot going up, half a size is super, super common. With that said, let me know what you guys think about the Air Jordan 1 Low Ghost Green in the comments down below. Are these a cop? Are these a drop? Do you like the small changes they did to the shoe? Or are you unsatisfied with them? Or what other colorways would you like to see get the OG treatment? I, for one, would love to see maybe the Chicago's get a release with the OG treatment. And I'm really looking forward to that Shattered Backboard theme one as well. I just love seeing that Nike air on the tongue. Call me a hype beast, but that's typically what a lot of us Jordan 1 heads love. We love that Nike air on the tongue. Anyway, smash that like button down below. I'll leave links for these sneakers in the description as well. And I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I'll be uploading a lot more reviews and Jordan 1 news on the way. So stay tuned for that and check out my other channel, Sneaker Talk 365 for more reviews just like this. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.